You know, one thing I really can't stand is people looking at me like they feel sorry for me. And I seem to be getting that wherever I go these days. I, I don't like it. Stop it. Well, I know what you mean. I'm all alone, too. Well, to be completely immodest about it, if I may, uh, <clears throat> my record speaks for itself. As district attorney, I had women working on all levels of my staff. In fact, I, I think it's uh, common knowledge that women played a very important role in my getting elected senator. <laughs> this is priceless. How's it's kind of like Soon Yi and Mia sitting oh. down to watch a Woody Allen what? movie, don't you? <laughs> very hectic, uh, mainly because I have a lot of obligations here. Oh, if they well, only knew. No, no, they haven't, but I think that will be forthcoming very soon. Well, let's hope so. I understand that you're looking at real estate in Georgetown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm afraid I am. <gasps> He's really doing it. Unbelievable. Have you made any decisions on your Washington staff yet? Well, we know someone he's leaving behind, don't we, we, honey? Listen, please. No, I haven't, but uh, I will be deciding that very, very soon. You know, we heard a lot during the campaign about the rezoning of the waterfront. Mm -hmm. And that's a very politicized topic, and the staff that I'm currently assembling, they're going to be looking into all sides of that issue. What did he During the campaign, say? you stated clearly that you were for protecting the land for environmental and historical reasons. Now, Nick, all I'm saying to you right now is that I want my new staff to take a look at all sides so I know where to use my voice, where it will do the most good. Now, your constituents may feel that that is a complete reversal. Do you want to comment on that? <laughs> That's because the hypocrite has sold out. Well, he didn't have much choice. They're all the same, honey. Empty promises. Nick, what I opposed, and I thought I made this abundantly clear during the campaign, what I opposed was the reckless development of that site, or any site for that matter, without the due consideration of its intrinsic values. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have here tonight. Uh, I would like to thank Senator-elect Ross Marler for joining us for this edition on Issues and Answers. This is Nick McHenry. Have a good evening. And Ralph. Thank you. Uh, Ross? Yes? Off the record, you are not going to let Thorpe build this monument to his ego, are you? Well, I just want my new staff to get an opportunity to look at all sides of the issue. That's all I'm saying. Oh, uh, Ross, one more thing. This is completely unrelated. Uh, what can you tell me about your assistant district attorney, Jim Haggerty? I understand that he's being considered for the replacement post uh, for the DA's office? Yeah, yeah. The attorney general is running a background check right now, but, you know, that's about all. Why are you so interested in Haggerty? Personal reasons. Oh. Well, that's all I know. Sorry, I wish I could help you more. I can. Fletcher, when you're on the payroll, I hope you're not going to be openly defying me like this. Did you say when, not if? We'll talk later. <laughs> hey, looks like things are looking up, buddy. Yeah. I'm happy for you. The dirt that's fit to print. Let's do it. Well, congratulations. I thought the interview went splendidly. And it sounds like you and I have a deal, partner. <laughs> Look, 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 I know you've got a lot on your plate right now. The transition must be a logistical nightmare. I'm swamped. Look, I appreciate that, but there are a few matters that need clarification. You heard what I said on the waterfront project. Just be satisfied. Obviously, we can't talk here. Uh, how about your place? This is not a good time for me, Roger. Sorry, I can't wait. Wow, you're kidding for the last five years. You care to join me on a toast to the senator-elect? No. To Senator Marler, a man of much talk, little action. <laughs> well, you think he's so hot, doesn't say too much for the Spalding boys. <laughs> I mean, on a scale of one to ten, oh, I'd say I'd give him about eight, five. Why do you have to do this? It's medicinal, darling. It's, uh, I can't sleep. I close my eyes and little images race on the back of my eyelids like tiny home movies. Can't you just let this go, Mom? Mm. Uh, we both had lives before Ross. I'm getting on with mine. How long are you going to wallow in this? I can't believe my ears. Are you actually talking about going back to the good old days? You who has so often told me that things were always rotten between us. Not always. Well, let's think back to the last time we got on. 
Oh, yeah, I remember. The memory I use for this is always your ninth birthday party. You remember? It was a big party and lots of presents, and you and I got on horses, and we ran. We rode into the woods and had a picnic. I remember laughing. I remember you talking to me like an adult. I felt very close to you. Yeah, I think you were having boy problems. I should have seen the signs. You didn't have the decency to wait until you were a teenager. Mom, <laughs> do we, can we have a conversation without hurting each other? I mean, is it, is it possible to put the, the past behind us? I'm the one who's had too much to drink. First you want to put the past behind us, because you want to go back to the past, now you want to put the past behind us. Which is it? Of course, you know, you're right, as much as I hate to admit it, but in vino veritas, things were never good between us, Blake. So what's the point of going back to anything or forward to anything? I mean... join me. I have work to do, as I said. I understand. I have to take care of this now before you're off to Washington. You'll be dealing with the rigorous demands of senatorship, and I'll be overseeing a massive construction project here. We'll be having very little contact between us, which is just fine for both of us, but I've got to make sure we're of a single mind about this. So, we finally get to it, huh? I don't think it's a good idea for you to have Fletcher read on your personal staff. Well, Fletcher, it's none of your business. Look at it logically. Man's a reporter by trade. Lots of connections to the media. It's where his heart truly lies. I trust him implicitly. Which is why I'm the more objective party here. Now, come on. I know he's a friend. Promises may have been whoa, made. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, wait a minute. This was not part of the deal. Now, I agreed to help you with Thorpe Towers because I decided that all the other good I could do in the Senate far outweighs one issue. In return, you agreed not to meddle in other affairs, and I'm certainly not going to let you appoint somebody to my staff. I wouldn't dream of telling you what to do. Well, what do you call it, Roger? Protecting our mutual interests. We have no mutual interests. We both want this to work. Now, come on. Fletcher is the kind of guy who asks a lot of questions. Too many. And when he doesn't get the answers he wants, he keeps digging until he finds them. And you don't need a guy like that around. It wouldn't be a problem if you would keep your distance. I'm not just talking about your involvement with me. There's Blake's indiscretion. Breaking and entering into your opponent's headquarters, stealing information that was responsible for you winning the election. False information. Now, come on. We both know what would happen if that got out. Don't you think it would be wiser to just tell Reed that you've chosen someone else? <laughs>